All right, so there are two main types of uh, optical telescopes. One is refractor telescopes, uh, where we use glass lenses, and the reflector telescopes, uh, where we use mirrors instead of lenses. So I think by now you know what is reflection and refraction mean. So the whole idea of this name coming from that uh, property of light. Then uh, both types uh, accomplish exactly the same thing, but in completely different ways. So here's two pictures of refracting telescope and a reflecting telescope. So here in a refracting telescopes, uh, we are using lenses. So here eyepiece lens and here's the objective lens. So light rays that's coming from far away objects will um, cr um, create an image at the focal point over here. Then it will be the focal point for the second lens and it will send the uh, light rays into our eye and we can see a far away object um, closer and bigger. Right, so when we talk about telescopes, when you hear the word, we will feel like, oh, this is a telescope. But that, those are one type of telescope, refracting telescopes. Then the, uh, the other type is reflecting telescopes. So, you know, like reflection happen uh, when we are using mirrors. So in this one, uh, we have a mirror down here. It is a curved shaped mirror. And also there's a flat mirror over here. So this is a concaved mirror. It's a caved mirror and this one is a flat mirror. And here in the eyepiece, we are using a lens to see it. So main scenario of collecting rays happens from the mirror. So the far away light rays that hits uh, onto the objective side of the lens, sorry, objective side of the telescopes will reach all the way to the down, to the curved mirror. And then they are, it's collecting the light rays into the flat mirror. And from the flat mirror, the light get bended again uh, towards the, the eyepiece lens. So these are reflecting telescopes because the lights are, get reflected here. Here, these are refracting telescopes because the light mainly get uh, refracted from the lenses. Again, here's another picture of uh, reflecting and refracting telescopes. So starlight that's come from the eye lens, which collected to the focal point, and then we collecting it to the eye lens here. And the focal length means the from the lens to the focus point over here. So this is called the focal length. Uh, here, the focal length will be from the mirror to the primary focus point here. Okay, then that's the primary focus. Like like here, this is the primary focus, right? Uh, then on the refractive teles reflector telescopes, uh, this will be the primary focus, then that will be the, will create a image using this plane mirror. So this is the, the secondary mirror and that light will focus into our eye. Okay, so the refractor telescopes, so refractors are type of telescope that ma most of us use and we are familiar with. Uh, they have two parts. One is a long tube and it's made of metal, plastic or wood. Then we have glass combination lenses at the front and the, uh, at the eyepiece. Then the refracting telescope focus light rays by bending uh, them with uh, mirrors or glass mirrors. So this is a picture of the simplest telescope design. You could have a big lens gather the light and uh, direct it to a focal point and a small lens bring the image to the focal to your eye. So see like this one is a bigger uh, lens than the eyepiece lens. So, so the, when we have a big uh, objective lens, the magnification or the um, gathering power of light will increase. Uh, so the refracting telescopes are not used for astronomical research anymore because they are large and have a heavy lenses. There are places still be using those telescopes, but it is um, not largely used. Then uh, reflecting, te reflecting telescopes are uh, using widely these days. So the history is Isaac Newton developed the reflector about 1680. 
uh, in response to the chromatic aberration that uh, we call those as rainbow halo. So um, uh, it is a problem that's uh, having when we're using lenses. So the, you know, like lenses have a different shape. So when the light goes in, it bends differently for different colors. So there's a chromatic aberration. So to overcome that, Newton proposed to use mirrors to collect lights. Then in 1977, John Hadley developed a design that used uh, parabolic mirrors. And uh, there were various improvements in mirror making. So the Newton's reflecting um, telescopes developed a lot uh, after 17, 2020. So there are two type, there are four types of reflecting telescopes. Uh, one is the primary focus. So we call this one as the primary focus, uh, prime focus, sorry. So we call this as the prime focus. So basically what we do is we are using a, a tube with the curved mirror at the bottom and the light will get reflected and focused into one point over here. So it's using only one focus point. So we call this as the primary prime focus uh, reflecting telescopes and we can keep the eye over here and observe it, observe the object. Then in the Newtonian focus, uh, we are using a um, two mirrors. So one is the curved mirror on bottom. So this is the primary mirror and there will be a secondary mirror somewhere here. So there's a one focus point over here and then it's uh, those lights that's behaving like coming from the focal point will use in the mirror and get reflected back to the eyepiece. Then the uh, Cassegrain focus. So here we have um, uh, one primary focus point and a secondary focus point. And here again a mirror over there. And we are keeping the eye down below here. So not like this one. So in the prime focus we keep the eye up over here. So we are basically in the backward to the object. So the stars are over here, but we keep the eye there. Uh, here in the Newtonian focus, the eye eyepiece is somewhere here. So we keep our eye over there and seeing the uh, image. Uh, so the opening point for the eyepiece is closer to this side. That's where the uh, objective side of the telescope, right? So the stars are somewhere here. So we looking, we are not looking straight to the stars. We are looking from from this side, or uh, in the uh, very close to the uh, this opening side. Then on the Cassie grain focus, our eye should be oh, down here. So basically, we are looking uh, towards the star. Then the could focus. So could means uh, aparted. Maybe if you know French, it is a French word like could. Could means uh, cut in pieces, right? So on this one, uh, as you see, there's a primary mirror down here, and then it, the, here is pro, uh, make the primary focus point. Then we are using a secondary mirror to um, bend the lights more, and there will be a third mirror that we can uh, turn the light more further. So basically we can keep the eye somewhere closer to the primary mirror down here so we don't need not like this one so these are two different things right so newtonian focus we keep the eye closer to the uh, side of the star but here in the good focus we keep the eye somewhere down here closer to the primary mirror uh, so the uh, two element telescopes composed of a mirror as the objective and a lens for the eyepiece is, as shown here so this is a combination of both mirrors and lenses, right? So basically in Newtonian and the crude focus, we could focus, we are using a eyepiece lens uh, to help uh, viewing it better. Uh, but the primary uh, focusing of light happens from the mirrors. Uh, then the, this telescope from an image in the same manner as the two convex lenses telescopes already discussed earlier. Remember like when we are using the with the optical pictures that I show, like two lenses that collected lights. So the same thing happened uh, on these mirrors as well. Uh, but here, the most importantly, it, it does not suffer from chromatic aberration like we had when we're using lenses. So here, there's no chromatic aberration that's the uh, advantage of using these type of mirrors. So the uh, if we 
a little bit more about chromatic aberration. So that's a problem with lenses. So when the light travels from the lenses, uh, now think about blue light. So the blue light collect or focus into this point, but the red light wavelength is larger, so it bends more. Uh, and it's collected somewhere here. So for red light, the focal point is somewhere there. So you know, like when we have an object, it's emitted white light that comes from uh, seven colors or the seven wavelengths. So if we, when, then when we're using lenses, those light can collect it in somewhere uh, different places. So that's a problem in uh, creating images. So this is mainly happened due to the uh, wavelength difference in the uh, light like between blue and red, for an example, and also the shape of this lens. So we can correct this error by making a, uh, lenses using different type of glasses and also make it uh, thick, right? So it's by changing the size of the lens, we can uh, get rid of this chromatic aberration. However, mirrors are better than lenses. It's cheaper and also uh, affordable. So, um, you know, like in electromagnetic spectrum, we have a lot of rays other than visible light. So gamma rays, X-rays, uh, ultraviolet rays, infrared rays, radar, then radio waves. So using optical telescope, we can only see this small range. But, you know, like universe is big and it comes with a lot of collection of electromagnetic waves. So um, many modern day telescopes, we do not use visible light to collect images, but we are using radio telescopes, X-ray telescopes, IR telescopes, uh, and they are more stable, uh, stable uh, in uh, modern day astronomy. Also, we are combining the lenses with the chips to collect uh, images properly, like we are using in a digital camera. So a radio telescope is a device that we are using to collect radio waves that come from objects in space. And also, you know, like radio waves have a longer wavelength, so they can travel more further. So radio waves are an important wave that can be found in the universe. And also they are traveling fast, right? Electromagnetic waves travels fast, so we can collect the data. So most radio telescopes have large curved surface like dishes. So radio telescopes can combine multiple dishes to form one large dish. So here, uh, a picture of a radio telescope. So radio telescopes use large reflecting antenna. A dish is a type of antenna, right? So this is a, a large um, antenna. So it's a dish shape. And here's the focal point. So if we keep a, a chip or a somewhere that we can collect this data, then we can we will facing placing it on at this focal point so we can collect the data then the radio waves have longer wavelength so very large dishes are required to produce a reasonable sharp radio images um, so we can we need to have a big dish not a very small dish then the very large array in new mexico is set of 27 radio telescopes that can be uh, maneuver and combine together to form one radio telescope 25 kilometers in diameter. So you don't see a one large radio telescope, but a combination of 20, uh, 27 radio telescopes and it's create one image in into the, uh, when we are looking at the image, it's just a one image, but a combination effect from the 27 radio telescopes. Um, then there's another one in the Puerto Rico, that's built in a natural bowl in the ground. Uh, it is through 305 meters in diameter, so it is a big one, uh, and it is embedded in the ground. Then, uh, uh, to give, just to give you an idea about the optical red and radio views of Saturn, that's just an example. So here's the optical view. So if you're using refractive or reflective telescopes, we should be able to see a picture like this one, but when you're using radio waves, uh, we will be seeing a picture like that, but by doing uh, analysis and converting the data into image type uh, pictures, we can see a good picture. But here's a direct radio wave picture of Saturn. Uh, there are observatories 
so observatory is usually a building that has one or more telescopes. So some ob observatories are not in buildings because they are in space. So why would we want to have an observatory in space? It should be pricey, right? But uh, does Earth have not? Uh, what does Earth have not have that would make the telescopes on the surface uh, undesirable? So what do you think? Uh, so it's important to take the telescopes into space, right? Anyway, so this is another example of a uh, observatory, and in these ones, uh, Chandra X-ray Observatory, and um, they are using X-rays, um, and it is an observatory. That's very important observatory that we are using X-rays to collect the uh, images from the space. So the Going back to having the telescopes in space, so mainly it's due to the atmospheric turbulence. So earth-bounded telescopes, which means the telescopes that are on the ground. Um, so for an example, Hale at uh, Mount Palmo uh, are not diffraction limited because they have a worse problem, which is turbulence in the earth atmosphere. So it makes the stars twinkle at night and cause the telescope's image of a star to jump around. So, you know, like stars are twinkling. So that's due to the uh, Earth uh, atmospheric turbulence. So the image jumps too quickly for a photographic film to keep up with, but not too quickly for computer controlled accurates to react. So using the uh, accurators to distort the mirror to compensate for this jumping image problem is called the uh, adaptive optics. Okay. I think I already show you the ad adaptive optic pictures of uh, Uranus above. Uh, so the telescopes in orbit, um, here's a graph of the data that we are collecting. So extra, ultra, X-ray, ultraviolet, then the visible range, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. Uh, so the Earth atmosphere absorbs much of the radiation that arrives from space uh, and the atmosphere is transparent chiefly into two wavelength ranges known as the optical window and the radio window. A few wavelength in the near infrared also reach the ground. So here this is the transparency uh, and these are the, ex the different type of e electromagnetic waves. And you see like this is the optical window. So radio window is there, this one. So to avoid turbulence, um, so when you find a, find a bright star and this toward the mirror quickly enough to keep the image of that one uh, guided star uh, and we fixed in place, then the other stars near the guide star will then be stabilized as well. So we can do uh, that correct correction to avoid turbulence. So you, you use a guide star uh, to analyze other stars. Uh, then the other way is to avoid atmospheric turbulence is to put the telescope into the orbit or to the space, right? So there's no uh, atmospheric turbulence there. So the Hubble Space Telescope was put up in 1990 and it's intended to last until 2014. However, it is still running in a nice fashion. So it has a nearly eight feet wide aperture opening and has taken the most clear pictures of space. The James Webb Space Telescopes will replace the Hubble. It will have a mirror of nearly 21 feet and it's intended to look for enough into the universe to see galaxies, stars, and even planets in the process of forming. So you may visit their website, James Webb Space Telescope, and you can get more detail about this um, space uh, bounded telescope, planning to be bounded. So because it is very expensive to put the observatories into space, many telescopes are still earth bounded, uh, but we can still use that uh, guided star technique to overcome the, the turbulence, but it's not the best way to do it, but we are using that technique. Uh, so the light pollution, air pollution, and atmospheric in in interferences, where is the best place to install this large telescope is the space. So here's the list of optical telescope, the world largest optical telescope. So the Gran Telescopio Canaris, that's in Spain. Uh, that's the largest one. And then the Kicked um, telescopes in uh, Hawaii. 
Um, so uh, then the third one is in Texas, right? So likewise, uh, we have large telescopes in place in the world. So the mirror diameters are changing from 10.4 to 8. We have smaller telescopes as well, uh, but these are the largest one in the world. Now, if you look at this one, the Hobie Eberly Telescope in Texas, its diameter is large, but that is not the, the we don't consider that as the largest telescope. Um, its operation area is less than the other ones. The Keck Observatory is a two telescopes observatory and elevation of 4,145 meters at the summit of uh, Mauna Kea in Hawaii. So each mirror is 10 meter across, making them the second largest optical telescope on the planet. Then the giant Magellan telescope will eventually be the world's largest optical telescope. Its mirror will have uh, and, uh, about 24.5 meter diameter and will sit at last campus peak, Chile. So um, it will be placing 2,550 meters above the sea level. Uh, here's a, a sketch of uh, the telescopes on uh, Mauna Kea, Hawaii. So it is not just a single thing. It's a combination of lots of uh, telescopes here, observatories. And uh, also it is not running from one single country. It's a combination of uh, different country uh, scientists are working over here. See, this one is United Kingdom Infrared Telescope. Uh, it's, this, is, this part is belong to University of Hawaii. Um, this is a NASA infrared telescope facility. This is Canada, France, Hawaii telescope. So it's a combination of um, work from, from the, around the world. Then uh, the, the world's largest single dish radio telescope now is in China. Uh, here's a picture of that one. It is really large. I don't have numbers over here, but also the important thing is we, they can change this diameter depending on what they are looking at. It is a, a really nice, cool, a big radio uh, single dish telescope. Thank you and I'll see you on Friday.